Learning analytics is about far more than just identifying students that are at risk of failure or withdrawal. We've identified four different uses of learning analytics that occur throughout the world in educational institutions. The first major application of learning analytics that we see and which has grabbed the attention of the educational media and of senior management at educational institutions is early alert systems or student success systems as they're sometimes known. What these do is they take historical data about previous cohorts of students and develop a predictive model which then the data of an individual student can be mapped against and that shows then how likely they are to have problems academically or to drop out. It also produces what's known as actionable intelligence and you can then take an intervention on the basis of that intelligence which might be contacting the student for example or giving the student some kind of feedback in order to try and improve their chances of academic success. The next major use of learning analytics that we've encountered is course recommender systems. Now you may be used to buying a book on Amazon or selecting a film on Netflix and those may be because you've been recommended a particular item by those systems. That might be based on your past choices or it might, may be based on the choices of people like you. Course recommender systems work in a similar way. So students are often faced with a bewildering choice of courses to select. And these systems look at your past academic history and perhaps your career aspirations and then recommend the next course for you to take that based on how likely you are to succeed in that course. The third major area of learning analytics that we've encountered is adaptive learning. Now, again, this tries to move beyond the one size fits all approach to learning and provide personalised content to learners. Publishers have seized on this and are now adapting their textbooks, enhancing them through a more uh, personalised experience to the students. As they progress through that content, depending on how they've done, they will have different content presented to them. It doesn't have to just be about that kind of model though. We could do far more innovative things with uh, adaptive learning. And people have already started experimenting with pairing you up with other students, for example, that are encountering the same issue, or uh, perhaps pairing you up with a, a more expert student that's prepared to offer you their expertise. We're only at the beginning of this whole movement to adaptive learning. And I think as part of a more rounded educational experience, there are huge potentials here. The fourth major use of learning analytics is curriculum design. So looking at the curriculum, looking at the data that we've got about it and seeing whether it's functioning as we intended it to. Are students accessing the forums and contributing to those? Are they looking at particular bits of learning content? Are they participating in the learning as we intended them to? We have unprecedented opportunities to analyse that process and then to make evidence-based changes to the curriculum either on the fly as the students are progressing through the course or subsequently for further cohorts of students that, that take your modules in the future. So we started off looking at the biggest use of learning analytics which is identifying students at risk uh, and we've looked at several other applications that are emerging. I think we can expect a lot of new uses of data about students to be emerging over the next few years and we're really only at the start of a very interesting journey here.